Oh, great. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to uh, welcome to the hangout tonight. I'm incredibly honored and uh, and humbled to be able to uh, bring you a lot of, of people that I have a lot of respect for, both uh, both in life and on the lacrosse field. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, the shootout for soldiers, which is a fantastic 24 hour lacrosse game event. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce you to all of our all of our guests. Uh, we've got uh, Tyler from the shootout for uh, for soldiers. Uh, we've got we've got Graham Gill, uh, Garrett Thule, Eric Minea, and Kit Lowe. And why don't we uh, we start with with you, Tyler? Why don't you give us a little background around the, uh, about the shootout for soldiers? What made you want to start it? Uh, you know, just just about the event and and what you can expect if, if you're going to be there. Yes. Yeah, so the shootout for soldiers is a 24-hour lacrosse game benefiting wounded American military members. And the event started back in 2012. It was just an idea that uh, a few friends and I really had that we put into action. Uh, and it's kind of come into something pretty special in that it's a 24-hour non-stop lacrosse game. And how it works is a team will play for one hour from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. They'll be in one of two teams, so stars or stripes. And the score is tallied from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, so this year it's in Baltimore, for the third straight year of June 19th and 20th. And it's actually expanding to Long Island as well, which is pretty exciting, on July 24th. And last year the score was about 351 to 337. Um, Eric actually played in the first game, which is an all-veterans game too, which is pretty cool. And in the past two years we've raised about a quarter million dollars um, for a host of veteran charities, mainly the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, so it's pretty, pretty special, pretty cool. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm super excited. I, I hope I can make it out this year. But I know we had a we had a chat about the uh, uh, about the shootout for soldiers at uh, lacrosse convention this this year. And you told me a little bit about the the humble beginnings and kind of your expectations for the for the first year uh, and ha and how there was a, a great outpouring for for the event. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how it started? Yes, yeah, so the event started. I was a high school senior, uh, boys Latin. I was 18 years old, and a few friends and I had kind of heard about what was happening when veterans came back from overseas and the struggles they were facing, both mentally and physically. And we wanted to do something to help out, and we thought that lacrosse is just a very strong aspect of Baltimore, and that it could be used for something in terms of good in fundraising um, for these guys. And there's a lot of events out there that happen with tournaments and stuff. But a 24-hour lacrosse game kind of stumbled upon that idea to break the world record. And we organized the event. Um, you know, I, I always joke that it was a group of high school kids, some of our parents, and at 8 a.m., an hour before the event, we had people in, in gear ready to go because we weren't sure if people were going to show up. I mean, it was a general concern, excuse me, a genuine concern of mine that nobody was going to show up for the event. And that... We may have lost uh, lost Tyler there for a uh, for a second, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get him back here in a second. But uh, I wanted to uh, talk to talk to a few of you guys. We're very lucky to have uh, some some real high level professional players, uh, both both current and former. And uh, why don't why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Let's start with you, Graham, uh, about your lacrosse and uh, and military background. Graham, can you? Uh... Hmm. I will have having a little trouble uh, hearing uh, hearing Graham as well. It seems like. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, got you. Got you loud and clear now. All right, good. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, uh, Naval Academy, I feel like I'm the only Navy guy that's involved right now, which is a little bit, uh, you know, I I'm all right representing. That's okay, though. Um, <laughs> you know, Naval Academy graduated a few years ago. I uh, had an opportunity to play afterwards, played in the MLL for a little while, and then been playing the LXM Pro Tour uh, with uh, with the best announcer in all of uh, sports, right? <laughs> some some might say. Some might say. <laughs> that's right. Um, and uh, I've had the opportunity to play for a few years, and I, I got just uh, really lucky with my time afterwards. Um, going through flight school, I had uh, enough 
of an opportunity on the weekends to play in the MLL. And then once I got out of flight school and got to the real stuff out in the uh, real Navy, um, really couldn't commit like I, uh, I did when I was in the MLL. So uh, took a year off while I was on deployment, uh, came back, and then uh, that's really when um, – that's really when uh, LXM Pro kind of started, and I got involved from the beginning because I'm good friends with those guys. And uh, you know, it's from small beginnings and uh, and coming up. So awesome, awesome, Garrett. Yeah. So um, you know, I, I obviously went to uh, the United States Military Academy, uh, a little bit different path than the Naval Academy, but uh, yeah. So um, just graduated this past. Uh, past year, um, you know, uh, got the opportunity to play uh, play MLL, been doing that for, um, did that this whole summer, played MLL, and, um, you know, now I'm with Team USA, and, uh, you know, getting the opportunity to, to play um, while, uh, while serving, pretty, uh, pretty fortunate. Awesome. Eric? Hey, guys. I'm uh, a Long Island native. So I used to think uh, Long Island was the, the mecca of all things that is lacrosse <laughs> with a Baltimore as a, a far second. But uh, being here in Baltimore, I realized, you know, the tremendous opportunities that are here. Uh, so it's really, it's really awesome to actually be here. Um, graduated United States Military Academy in 05. And then, uh, you know, kind of the, the peak of the war. So it was right off to uh, Ranger School, Airborne School, 82nd Airborne for a 15-month deployment. Came back from that and then uh, was picked up for 1st Ranger Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment and then deployed another four times. Um, so it's kind of gone from uh, 07 to about 2011. Not a lot of opportunity to play. I played in some pickup leagues uh, down in Savannah to just try to stay active and get after it, but um, just stayed busy. And then uh, went to Hopkins, and that's how I got rooted here in Baltimore and got linked up with uh, Tyler and Shootout for Soldiers. Being close to Bethesda, I unfortunately have uh, several wounded friends and just kind of reached out to the community, and it happened to be a community for wounded folks, military folks, and lacrosse. And so what better, you know, area to kind of share an interest and commonality with some really good civilian and really good military people in the area. And uh, got involved with Shoot Out Soldiers. I'm also an active member for Team Red, White, and Blue as the uh, Veteran Outreach Director. And uh, I'm also uh, a guest motivational speaker for the uh, Wounded Warrior Project, um, which we'll touch on, I think, a little bit. But we're doing Face Off for a Cause, is the uh, events for this year to kind of uh, bring the aspect of the, what you learn in the field, in the practice field, in the game field, playing lacrosse, and how that translates to um, what, what's learned on the uh, lacrosse field, how that translates to, you know, combat and, and, you know, attributes thereafter. So really appreciative to be here, and uh, I definitely share some good uh, good company for lacrosse players. You know, these guys have achieved the high, highest levels of lacrosse, which is uh, awesome to be in the presence of. Great, thank you. I mean, we're we're very happy to have you here as uh, as well, Eric and uh, and Kit. Last but not least, um, actually, I break with the rest of them. I was an enlisted guy, but I, I'm a uh, honorary member of the Naval Academy class of 2002, which I actually happened to be the same time I was in high school. So, a little weird. Um, I didn't I didn't know much about lacrosse growing up, being in South Georgia. Um, we, when I got to college, though, I went to school at Kennesaw State, and um, at that point, I learned about lacrosse, and I started playing, but as soon as I started getting into it, I was called up to go serve overseas in Afghanistan, and while over there, I served with uh, the Marine Corps, and I took over my lacrosse sticks uh, with me and was trying to teach the Afghans and teach the uh, Army unit that I was working with. Um, and that's how, and then when I came home after I was wounded, lacrosse became sort of like, uh, what helped me get through being wounded and losing, uh, some teammates, um, that overseas. So that's a little bit about me. Well, and how did the, uh, how did the Afghans take to, uh, take the lacrosse? Uh, it's, um, interesting trying to teach them a sport that they had never seen before <laughs> or uh, could, could uh, really wrap their mind around. Um, but they seemed very enthusiastic about learning something new. And uh, I explained to them that it's a sport uh, played by our Native Americans and it's a uh, 
the sport for warriors, and they were like all over that when I explained it to them that way. <laughs> Great, awesome. Uh, I know in our in our last uh, news uh, TLN news that came out on Monday, we we sent out a poll about uh, some of the custom uniforms that had been uh, debuted this this past weekend, and uh, the overwhelming favorite were the were the wounded warrior uniforms. Um, which, which I think are fantastic. I mean, what does it, what does it mean to, to you guys to see the kind of outpouring support not only from the lacrosse community but uh, across all of America with the, the Wounded Warrior uniforms? Uh, let's start with uh, Graham. Yeah, Chris, I think that you know, it's, it's awesome to see the support that everybody's getting. Um, you know, our, our nation's armed forces, us included, and, and the Wounded Warriors, um, uh, it, it's great to see that kind of support throughout all age ranges, um, all kind of not even just in sports, uh, re- really all over the place. It's it's uh it's humbling to to have that type of support. I love the uniforms too; they were awesome. They looked sick. Yeah, they are really cool. Yeah, and then I know that uh, Eric, you spoke a little bit about uh, kind of teaching some of the some of the parallels between between the sport of lacrosse and 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 combat, and and can you can you tell us a little bit about you know what you what you talk about in those in those situations? Sure. I mean the uh, the shared hardships that you go through lacrosse practice. You know, you get a full academic day, um, then you go to practice for a couple hours, and then you hit the weights after that, or you. Unfortunately, you have to do some sprint anaerobic conditioning where you usually end up uh, on your hands and knees. And so it's kind of it, – it's a grueling to be a, a Division One athlete in a college setting. And the, the, the big thing is the shared hardship and the bonds that they forge there on the athletic field. And you don't want to be the first one out or the first one down. You want to be there for your brothers to the left and to the right. Uh, and you want to stay focused for those right reasons. And, and those, those common goals – you know, honor, integrity, commitment to each other to, to be the best lacrosse player you can, to be the best athlete you can, uh, directly translates over to the, to the combat world. Uh, so I'm an infantry officer uh, by trait and um, served in, in infantry units my entire time through, uh, through several deployments. And each deployment was unique and extremely challenging in their own set, both uh, physically, mentally, um, and any all aspects you can imagine. Um, and so what you learn on the lacrosse field you don't think about directly, but it's just it becomes part of you, and it's part of your daily actions and behaviors of the work ethic that you had and learned that was instilled from you and the coaches, and that you you shared with each other, and that's the same mentality you bring to that platoon or to that company or to that assault force that you're a part of, and it's contagious. It spreads. If they if they know you're there for them, regardless of life, limb, or eyesight at risk, they're going to do the same for you. And when you have a cohesive unit like that, I mean, that's an unbreakable bond, and you're a, you're a formidable force to get after. You know, very, very uh, grateful and privileged to be a part of, uh, you know, the units that do that. And I got to say, the, the UMD, uh, Wounded Warrior Project, lacrosse jerseys were pretty, pretty awesome, too. Really yeah, cool. I mean, I think, they're, I think they're really cool, and I, and I really like what uh, Under Armour's doing uh, as well, making, making all of the equipment available uh, for sale through the, through the various lacrosse outlets with proceeds benefiting, benefiting the Wounded Warrior. And uh, all of you at home have the opportunity as well if you go to uh, umterps.com to, to bid on the, on the game-worn uniforms, which is also pretty awesome. And uh, I, I, mean, I guess another uh, question that I've got, and this will start with, start with you, Eric, is, is what it means to, to have gone to the academies and then been selected to you know, be a part of, of Team USA. Yeah, it's a it's a great honor. Um, you know, just having been a part of the academy and being associated with guys like Eric, um, you know, it, it's it's a huge honor just knowing that I'm the one person that's been selected to um, to represent all of them. And uh, you know, just everything that these guys stand for. Um, you know, it's it's like I'm playing for something bigger myself. And uh, you know, it's just a, a great honor, like I said, to to be out there doing it for everybody. And, uh, and, and Graham, I know I know you've been in in some of the U.S. camps as as well. Yeah, I, it's 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 awesome. It's a great opportunity. Um, I, I'm very jealous of the guys that get to put the uniform on. It, it it's great. I mean, you get to put your your military uniform on every day while we're going to work. But it would be 
you know, it, it's a great honor to even go out there and just have the opportunity to play for the country and be a part of the lacrosse is the highest level of lacrosse around, and that's that's always fun. It's amazing. Yeah, and I know if uh, if those of you at home haven't seen the uh, Road to the Rockies series yet, it's uh, it's definitely worth your time. And just listening to the message that that Coach Mead has uh, for the players, uh, trying out about how important uh, it is to him the uh, the opportunity to put on put on the uniform for USA and everything that it means to him and uh, and the rest of the players there. It's a really really powerful moment. Um, and I, mean, I guess let's let's talk some more. Uh, Let's talk some more lacrosse. I mean, I know that you, you guys are involved involved now. Um, I mean, are, are you doing some more uh, some more youth stuff and, and spreading uh, spreading lacrosse lacrosse that way? Let's uh, let's start with Kit. Um, the stuff I'm doing right now, I'm working with. I helped develop the wheelchair lacrosse program for the U.S. Army at, with their Warrior Transition Unit um, at Fort Stewart, and um, actually, Fort Gordon up in Augusta, Georgia, they were, we had them down for the clinic we did at Gordon and, or at Stewart, and they were excited about it, so we got involved, I'm involved with helping the people out at Gordon. Um, we had a clinic in Atlanta uh, with a civilian people that do wheelchair lacrosse, and we had people from Benning for the first time involved. But we're looking at doing maybe a clinic in at Walter Reed sometime after the shootout. Um, to help grow the sport within the Wounded Warrior community because uh, I've, I've found out that lacrosse has helped um, help um, with the uh, recovery process. So that's what I've been doing right now um, with, uh, with lacrosse and I'll be playing back to playing college ball uh, this, all, this fall semester at Kennesaw State. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. And uh, it's uh, Eric. You know, I got to say, and it's something I want to point out because it's a, it's a reincarnate theme that I just i am really passionate about. And I think we're all kind of hitting on it, but I just really want to articulate it that <clears throat> you talk about the back to the Native American roots, and it's, you know, it, it's a sport for warriors. And how interesting that lacrosse is now the vehicle for, you know, both wounded, both active, and future budding warriors for this country to all find that commonality and to, to come, come together and get after it in, in all capacities. And everyone's contributing at so many different levels to, to do their part in their local communities, regardless of, you know, yeah, typically a Long Island sport or a, a Maryland sport, but now it's all over. You know, you have a uh, kit down in Georgia getting after and spreading the wealth there, you know, doing, doing the wheelchair stuff. I mean, how, that's just incredible to do, uh, to be a part of. Um, so for me personally, when I, I'm actually uh, in the States uh, or at home here in Maryland, um, I did have some time this past summer, and I helped implement a, a summer camp program for the Hope Academy, uh, inner city Baltimore, uh, kind of underprivileged kids, ages 6 to 13, never really saw a uh, lacrosse stick, never really knew what to do with it. They get, of course, the inherent idea is to hit each other with it, um, but both, you know, boys and girls, and just uh, really got them, got them interested and excited for the, uh, for the game uh, for lacrosse. And, I mean, we're out there in the summer in Baltimore at 110 degrees, and these kids are just getting after it and loving it, loving the sports, doing line drills and doing some, you know, some pickup games and really enjoyed it. And then when I did have a little more time, I was over at Hopkins uh, ROTC. Um, I did have some time to cut off, and I was assistant coach at Archbishop Curley uh, here in Baltimore. Uh, unfortunately, due to uh, job restraints, I wasn't able to continue that endeavor. But, you know, I do what I can when I can. Yeah, and I mean, I think along some of those, some of those same lines how you mentioned, you know, the, the, the Warriors in, in, in lacrosse, Right. Is, is to point out the, the success of those programs uh, at the academies. I mean, I know Graham was part of a national championship team. Uh, Army's having a really, really solid season this, this year. And, uh, I mean, you, you can't help but, but notice that those are some of the, especially of late, most successful programs at the academies. And it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. It's really, and I think the, the, you know, the other guys touch on the academy aspect, but you talk about those common hardships. You know, you talk about an academy guy. I mean, I mean, of course, you know what a West Point guy goes through, and I'm pretty familiar with what a Navy guy goes through. Um, and it's it's difficult. You're carrying a, a credit, um, an academic credit load of you know 17, 18, 19, up to 21 credit hours, 
full day schedule. You got to have your bed made, memorize meals, know the news articles, study for how many quizzes and exams, and then you got to be expected to turn all that off, go to the hit the athletic field, and get after it. And so there's that, you know, that again, that shared brotherhood that uh, you know you get in other college programs, of course, but it is really is a, a pressure cooker to fuse uh, those cohesive traits at the academies and through the military, and then translate that to the cross field. And I think you have a pretty unbreakable bond there at the academy folks as well. Yeah, I know along some of those some of those same lines, Graham, uh, you have an event this weekend that uh, builds builds on the bonds that uh, that you built in college. Yeah, we do, Chris. Uh, we we had the opportunity, like you said, we had the opportunity to play for a national championship in 2004, and Navy is uh, bringing our team back together this weekend um, for the. You know, kind of to honor us, to get us back in the in the stadium, and they're going to give us, you know, the hoot and holler at halftime. But uh, I think it's really to kind of get us back and be hanging out with the guys that are there, that are in the grind, that Eric's talking about. You know, the day to day things that you know, unless you did it, you don't really understand what they're going through. So um, we do have that opportunity to get back together with a lot of the guys. Unfortunately. There's a handful of guys that are on deployment and aren't going to be able to be there, but I am very, very excited for this weekend. I'm heading back to Annapolis uh, tomorrow, actually, and I can't wait. Awesome. And let's uh, let's go back to let's go back to Tyler. I know we lost you right at the tail end of you were telling us kind of the origin story of of the shootout. Yeah. I was dying to hear Tyler. <laughs> I apologize. My internet cut out. Um, so the, the shootout really began with just kind of trying to make the event happen. And it wasn't like a big you know, vision for something much greater. There wasn't a big fundraising goal, to be honest with you. We started with the fundraising goal of $10,000. Uh, we got that in the first two weeks. Uh, and it kind of built from there. And it became a very big community event in a lot of ways. Uh, it wasn't something that I myself did or even our small organizing group did. It was a lot of chipping in from people around us, and that's really a product of the Baltimore community and the lacrosse community, to be honest with you. People who sponsored the event were lacrosse players or lacrosse fans. People who came to the event for the food, for the apparel, the everything. And uh, that's really what's made it so successful so far, and uh, I'm really appreciative of that. I know my team is, and that's kind of made the event the last two years. Great, great. And, uh, I mean, I've got a... I've got a question for, for all you guys. We'll start with we'll start with Garrett. What's your what's your absolute favorite lacrosse moment? Could be could be anything growing up, playing in college, playing now, a- anything really. Um, I definitely have to say um, I really have two favorite moments for in my lacrosse career. Um, I think my first one would have to be my final win over Navy my senior year. Um, <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, yeah, it was our, it was our fifth fifth win, and uh, we were, remained undefeated. So it was a uh, yep. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was a big deal for us. And um, then I, I think my other biggest moment would be uh, you know beating Syracuse my freshman year uh, in the dome in the first round of the uh, NCAA playoffs. So th- those two are uh, they're they're rivaling each other. But I don't know. I'd probably have to go with the Navy one for sure. <laughs> Second that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'll give you mine. Uh, I think right, we kind, of, kind of talked about it a little bit already. I, I think uh, it's very kind of very specific. There was the last face-off of my of the national championship game that we played in in 2004. I was on the wing um, with Chris Rosanka taking the face-off and Steve Looney on the other side. And it was at M&T Bank Stadium, and it was so loud in there that I literally couldn't hear the guy at the face-off X blow the whistle. Um, I, I just went when everybody moved. I, I probably could have heard him, but there was there was none of this going on. I was I was focused, and uh, it, it was one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. So that was that was really awesome. And we were five and zero against Army too. <laughs> just, just throwing throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah. Eric. So uh, I guess to, to caveat uh, Gil, so I, I played against Graham um, and I faced off against PZ, his face-off guy, and it was uh, typically an, uh, an epic battle of uh, who had each other's number that day. And so I think it was the second meeting that year. Um, 
that I scored uh, opening face off with not, an under seven seconds for a fast break goal. Um, to, to kind of st- we ended up losing the game, so I guess it wasn't that good for the longevity of it. But uh, it was still awesome to be a part of it and just be in that atmosphere. And the uh, the other one dates back to uh, Long Island when I was playing for St. Anthony's, and uh, heard about the Long Island Empire State Lacrosse team. And you know, like 900 people had to be invited, and only 32 would make it. And uh, it was just a really lofty goal when I heard about it in eighth grade and in my senior year or my junior year, I should say, I ended up making the team. So when I got that phone call. From the coach saying I was one of the final 32 for the team. Um, that was just a, a besides myself moment that, uh, you know, I achieved something that I thought was kind of an untouchable, you know, thing. I thought it was just out of my reach, but just went out there and left it all in the field and, and got after it and made it. So it was pretty cool. Great. Awesome. And, uh, Kit, do we, uh, do we have you back now? Uh, yeah. Right. Um, the, you know, I didn't get to grow up on it, so I don't have the childhood fondness from it. Um, <laughs> but actually, the two things that have stood out to me, both of them have happened since I've been wounded, was um, after I came back home from Afghanistan, I was at Walter Reed recovering from a gunshot wound, which left me wheelchair-bound for uh, almost 10 months. I, I um, got a package one day in the mail from the Mohawk Nation and it was a lacrosse stick, one of their traditional sticks and I think I scared the hell out of the nurses at Walter Reed with that because I was just running around playing with that thing <laughs> and then the other thing was um, oh, t- almost two years after I'd been wounded I got to go play for a USA team in the 2011 um, Australian Men's National Championship and it was just great the fact that I was able to represent my country again, um, you know, in a different uniform. And it was just, it was so much fun being able to be pl- upright again and playing, you know, lacrosse. Yeah, that's that's a really, really great story. And then kind of we'll, we'll stick we'll stick with lacrosse. I mean, I know there's been uh, a lot of a lot of changes in the uh, in the rules of the last uh, you know couple of years. And uh, you know where where do you see the game the game going? It's growing at an astronomical rate. Uh, that's that's really exciting. But where do you think the next level for uh, for lacrosse is? We start with uh, Eric. You know, I see it grow and expand. And you know, I referenced the uh, the two meccas that were Long Island and Baltimore, and, and that is no longer the norm. You have talented players across the country. And now you have a lot of schools giving lacrosse a huge opportunity to incorporate them into their programming for you know collegiate lacrosse, whether it's Division One through One, Two, or Three. And so you're seeing you know the talent pool and the paradigm shift of the powerhouses of the '90s and early 2000s, the Princeton's, the Cuses, the Maryland's, and uh, in Virginia, those those type of legacy schools. And that paradigm is shifting. And, and you know I think that's represented at what last year or the year before. My years kind of meld together now. Um, but, but Albany upset Hopkins, you know, here, uh, I think, a year, again, a year or two ago. And so you look at a, a, school, a New York, upstate New York school, Albany, like, wh- where they come from? They come they come prepared, strapped on, because they're stacked with athletes. And you look at, nationally, uh, it's a growing sport. And you look at a guy like Tyler who brings lacrosse to Uganda, of all places, you know? So you're looking at, now, an, an international spectrum of this sport. And nationally, you know, I want to see it continue to grow and just become a... a a warrior nation of lacrosse brotherhood, uh, and then you know internationally, I think it'd be pretty awesome to be uh, an Olympic sport one day for the Summer Games. That's what I'd like to see. Great. Yeah, Eric and I had actually talked about this earlier today, and I've been pretty involved um, for the last three years with the Ugandan lacrosse team, and it's been pretty special to be a part of. And what's so cool for me to see the sport in Uganda is is that they play it for the same reasons that I played it growing up and that they enjoy it and the brotherhood of it. And to me, that's so special about it is that the sport, once we had the pads and the sticks and the balls, and even in Uganda, they lose the cross balls like no other. They go in the woods somewhere or you shot, hits off the pipe and it rolls away. But they come, they play the sport, and they stick around after and shoot around. Or they joke with each other. And I think I'm really excited for them to kind of come to the World Games in 2014. Because I think that it'll show that the sport has this really unifying factor because it's so team-oriented. And to me, that's that's where I like to see the game go. Um, 
I know Eric mentioned earlier with some lacrosse going on in inner city Baltimore. I think that stuff is so cool because it's so team oriented and seeing as a sport starts going these different markets that are beyond Baltimore and Long Island um, and just into everywhere really, internationally and nationally, uh, that's pretty exciting. I think in 10 years we're going to start seeing it be a, a pretty mainstream sport of people just playing it. That's exciting. Yeah, and it's the first, first African nation that will be competing yeah. uh, in, in the world game. So definitely, definitely exciting. Moment. <laughs> uh, what, about, uh, what about you, Garrett? Um, yeah, I agree with Tyler. I think, um, you know, within the next you know, decade or so, it'll definitely be one of the mainstream sports. Um, I think it's something that really appeals to people that have never even seen it before. Um, I had a couple of people come to, um, to a Wings game last weekend, and they were talking about how never seen a lacrosse game, but, you know, they, they want to come back for more, and now they're addicted. They're watching it on YouTube and all that. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of where the game's going. Um, I'd love to see... Um, in terms of the collegiate game right now, I'd love to see the game go towards that MLL style where it's just run and gun, and you know you got the 60 second shot clock or 30 second shot clock, whatever it, it may be. Um, but I think people just want to see goals. People want to see uh, you know exciting plays and stuff like that. And um, I think that's like what what appeals the most about lacrosse to um, people that have never even seen it before. Absolutely. I mean, it definitely seems that the consensus. Uh, is, is with you in, in you know continuing to to adapt the rules to, to, to continue making it the, the fastest sport on uh, on two feet and making it uh, you know the most exciting field sport as far as I'm concerned. Now we're just just about uh, coming to the end of our uh, our hangout here. Do you guys have any uh, any shout outs or, or hellos or, or thoughts that you want to uh, want to toss out there before we, we finish up? I want to I, I got okay. I got to shout out Tyler real quick. Um, so today I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, part of uh, an award presentation for Tyler. So we got I got linked out with Shoot Out for Soldiers you know, two years ago. Last year I had more presence with it, and we, lo uh, we linked in a, a local Army recruiter just to show, have presence, have a uniform, hand out dog tags to the little kids, and just get them excited about soldiers and military, stuff like that. And, uh, and kind of building relationships and networks here in Baltimore, we're looking to – Knock on wood, fingers crossed. Get the Golden Knights, the the army, the army <laughs> premier parachute team, to kind of kick off the shoot off for soldiers here in Baltimore. Which I can't express um, how significant and high level um, that is. So as a result of that activity and interest, the the commanding general for the recruiting command, a two star general, came down to a, a recruiting <laughs> station here in Baltimore to personally present Tyler with a, a an award, saying you know basically a civilian. Uh, center of influence, person of influence within the community, straight civilian, doing big things for the military, <laughs> just selfless service, things that we try to ingrain in the military folks that Tyler already has. So, I mean, I was happy to be part of that, and uh, I just got to give him this public shout-out that, you know, can, can do, you know, great things. So, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, I was going to say, I, not nearly as awesome as that, uh, but Garrett, I saw your highlight diving goal yesterday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, there was one. Th uh, there was one thing I wanted to mention. I can't remember which guy it was that just uh, talked about maybe adding it to the Olympics. Yep. I talked. I talked to the Paralympic Committee and the uh, military. The Department of Defense has what's called the Warrior Games every year, and 25th cross be an exhibition game. Um, so we're crossing our fingers that it might be added on as of uh, full time in probably 2016. Hey, you said that was a DOD sponsored event. Yeah, the DOD is the DOD and the U.S. Paralympic Committee run the, the Warrior Games. All right, I'll get the offline. I'd like some more information with that and see what I can do for mine as well. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Things happen. I was going to kind of add on, too. I'm not sure if people have seen it yet, but there's a fantastic article in Lacrosse Magazine by Corey McLaughlin um, on uh, the senior um, Casey Carroll, who's a defenseman for Duke, and he was a defenseman for Duke for three years, went and served the Army Rangers, um, and I know that's the same battalion that um, it's in division that Eric was in, and we talked about that today. So I definitely recommend kind of taking a look. Um, and, and I guess kind of a small shout out really to the people who have chipped in the most, I guess, to make this event happen. 
um, and kind of supporting it. Definitely yourselves, definitely been there. Um, obviously, they're doing this call. Uh, U.S. Lacrosse has been great. They're actually giving membership to U.S. Lacrosse for all um, veterans playing in the event this year, which is really cool. So we do a mem veterans game to start the event, uh, and U.S. Lacrosse is getting them all membership and getting them all the perks and stuff. And uh, definitely Lacrosse Limited, who's been with us from the start, uh, they produce all our apparel and everything. And I can't thank them enough because when we started the event, it was a small-time thing, and they definitely helped us get our name out there, make things happen. So uh, I appreciate that to everyone who's helped out. Great. Garrett? Well, yeah, um, I'd like to give a shout-out to my Army Prep lacrosse team, who uh, today we beat uh, the Hachi School 13-4, uh, to 4, so I'm real proud of them for that. Great win. <laughs> um, then I'd like to give a shout-out to my buddy, uh, Mike Grimm. Uh, he's a former staff sergeant in the Army, uh, was in 175, and uh, he's helped me bring uh, you know, the military academy style lacrosse to, uh, to kids this summer. Um, so we're helping to spread the game. Uh, we're doing a camp in uh, down in Florida and um, and up here in uh, MPA. So big shout out to them. Great. And before we go, uh, Tyler, why don't you tell us where we can find all of the important information and the dates? I know uh, we're coming coming right up on it. Yeah. So we got about uh, two a little over two months until the Baltimore event, and about three months until Long Island. So you can find all our info at shootoutforsoldiers.com. Uh, we're pretty active on a host of social network, uh, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Definitely check us out on there. There's tons of ways to get involved with the event from playing. And last year, kids as young as eight and as a guy as old as 71 played in the event. Uh, it's men's and women's for both. Uh, we're very open to a lot of things. I, I know Eric was there last year, so we can speak to it. But it's really a full range of people. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Uh, get your team signed up. You can play individually as well, which is pretty cool. And that'll open up in late August, late April, excuse me. So we'd love to have you involved. Check us out. Um, you know, we're we're just trying to support those who've done so much for us, and then engage those people with our communities. And those are our two main goals, really. So we hope you kind of check us out and get involved. Great. Well, I want to thank uh, thank everybody for tuning in. I really really appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you for uh, for joining us and uh, and for your service. I mean, we wouldn't be able to enjoy this game that we love so much. In this 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 great this great country, without your contributions, and I you know I want you to know that I that I really appreciate it. And so everyone, definitely uh, you know comment below, tweet at us, uh, let us know what you think of the event, and uh, you know be on the lookout for for a lot more information coming about the shootout for soldiers. And yes. uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Have you all back on soon. As always, stay laxy. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Take care. Thank you, Chris. Yeah.